Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is Notch Buckler third place playoff for the bronze medal match. Um, chronologically, um, uh, time, time of recording is after all the finals uh, have been completed and um, the, uh, the, the the match recaps for them are already done as well. But I'm going to drop this into the playlist before the finals because I think it's a nice way to present it uh, in the end. Um, but we've got uh, North against Bretonian, so these are competing for seventh place overall for the season. Um, and were the bottom two where the uh, where we finished in the, in the table? Um, yeah, so and they finished seventh, north north seventh, um, Bretonians eighth. I should I always do this, but I should. Uh, you're going to see a, a little Windows Explorer. I can't, I only won't because it's on, hopefully on my screen. But I was going to show the standings. Um, now I've got to find them in this folder. I should always have this ready and never do. Uh, so this is our regular season standings in here. So it's these two teams. So we've got 1-1-5 one, one and five Norse uh, and 0-1-6 oh, Bretonians. Bretonians looking for, for a win to stick get themselves up into 7th uh, for the overall standings for the season. The um, rest of these games are all played, but the, the finals have come in this playlist. If you're just watching through like that, I won't spoil any of those. Um, uh, and what have we got here? What happened with the kick? Uh, the, the toss rather so not to right angle chose to kick so defending uh where's fame gone no fame there one fame for the north so north are attacking we'll have a look at the bretonians first uh so they have gone glad to see uh only three players on the on the line of scrimmage uh, there we go right let's have a look of the north so yeah just three linemen on the line of scrimmage which is much better we've highlighted that before about when they put loads of players on here they all get hit and against north they would all get hit um so we've got a block lineman two block linemen one block and tackle i think the uh the the unleveled one is a better sacrifice to, to make maybe although they have got a good frenzy trapping here and this could just potentially have been other players um because if the yeti wants to hit this guy I mean, they've got Fend as well, so they might not get the second block, but it could follow up and it'll be a, it'll be a one dicer, uh, maybe. No, it would be two. This guy's still a system. But having players just behind when you've got Frenzy on the line of scrimmage does make that much more risky. But Fend is going to kind of cancel out Frenzy anyway. Um, I babbled on for too long and lost all of our uh, icons. So we've got unleveled linemen, tackle linemen. It's both of these less valuable than the ones that are on the line, although the ones on the line with block are harder to look over. Uh, we've got a blitzer here with this is dump off and dodge. Uh, this blitzer here has mighty blow and sidestep. Uh, we've got dodge and sprint on that one, so it's a quicker one. Uh, and an unlevel blitzer. Where are the bodyguards? Blockers. There we go. Uh, one unlevel blocker there. There's a strength four one. Uh, and Bob the Stupid uh, is an unleveled lineman. It looks like they're down, down two blockers. Um, I don't know if they're missing next game or if they died. I really can't recall what happened to those. But just down to two blockers makes a Bretonian team considerably weaker. Um, the Norse here. So we've got the Yeti we already looked at. Um, as well as all its starting skills. Has Mighty Blow and Armour Increase and Guard. We've got an unleveled lineman there who's just putting an assist down. Um, another assist there will be good for the Norse because then the Yeti can get three dice. Uh, unleveled lineman there. This off where who's stroke five does have three dice uh, as it stands because the um, the Yeti has guard, so he can assist even though he's marked. Um, but this, this stroke five of where also finally has block uh, and has taken an agility penalty over the years. Uh, they're missing their other off where actually, aren't they? Who's got block and mighty blow? Uh, this berserker has guard and mighty blow. Um, unleveled lineman over here, runner with dodge, um, an unleveled berserker who would be nice to, to get some levels on. Uh, runner with dodge and shorthand, so he's probably the player who's going to go get the ball. Uh, but there's a shorthand lineman too, who's on 13 points, so maybe they want to have that one score the touchdown. And the bench here is a uh, is Jenkins. That's an off-brand name for this team, um, but is a is a block lineman. Uh, what an unleveled Norse lineman. I don't know if that's evoking Leroy Jenkins. Uh, maybe maybe Dauntless is on the cards for this one. Dauntless and Frenzy. It's got to be. They've got to be the skills you give Leroy Jenkins. So gone for the ball before throwing any blocks, um, which is is slightly riskier than a two dice block with uh, with block. 
Um, it's one in nine failure as opposed to one in 36. So actually quite a bit, quite a bit riskier. Uh, okay, the Yeti's gone left, so it does have uh, three dice, and now this off where I can uh, go that way too. And they're going to try and surf this guy from the line of scrimmage. Um, oh, without without fend, that would have been that would have been doable. Because um, the Yeti could have pushed to there, then the off there and there, and then the Berserker just off there. But fend would meant meant the. Um, the second blocks weren't going to happen, but if that was a standard lineman, three friendly players can set someone from there. Uh, Berserker go here, so trying to get value out of Mighty Blow, uh, first I go for it, uh, and, and then eat that one. So I had the ball safe, uh, didn't have many more players to act with, so it's probably a good decision to not re roll that one. Uh, and now the Bretonians, yeah, they're going to look to claim this space, I'd imagine. Uh, Blitz is probably going to be on one of these at least. I thought this would be the guy to do it, but probably going to try and make the most of Strict 4. And Strict 4 Wrestle can still bring, bring someone down. Um, if they're stuck with both down, so... I'll give up a lot of hits here, the Norse. Uh, the Bretonians, rather. Moving lots of players for them to see how this blitz goes, um, which is a pal. I'm just looking at just the order of what they did there. Um, so this blitzer was over here somewhere, and you'd think maybe with Mighty Blow, you want them making the hits. Um, they've used Strength Four, so they didn't even assist, which is you know good use of players. But I'm just thinking when this guy goes down, if this guy's still to act over here, he can come mark the ball carrier rather than be stuck on the screen. And this this um, lineman's going to have a hard time getting away from these. Uh, it's going to pull some support over here, which is going to mean some dice rolls. Um, but they could have had the ball carrier marked, giving them more problems than, um, than just this screen being marked. Because this guy can still move away and get safe over here. Although there's actually there's loads of good pressure here from the Bretonians. Um, yeah, it's given the Norse loads of problems. This could have been slightly more of a problem if this Blitzer was here instead. But there's a Norse here. I can't really see how you make the ball safe. Um, you've got to probably free this guy up. I think the Yeti needs to be the Blitz and then you're risking Wild Animal. Okay, so block, block uh, coming up trumps there and not giving away a turnover. Uh, so Yeti not moving, that was a 4 plus uh, Wild Animal roll because it's not the Blitz. Uh, okay, so moving the ball to this runner. Uh, makes the catch. Uh, and, oh, that, that seemed an abrupt turn in here. I wonder, I don't know if that was a, a time running out or anything because the ball's definitely not safe. Um... I was, yeah, I was expecting more actions after that. They didn't use their blitz that turn. Um, and before any of this, they should really be seeing what happens with what happens here. Need an assist and then a blitz on the ball um, before any of this goes on, because that's um, yeah, that's a lineman throwing two dice. They had to use a re-roll to avoid the turnover, which could have given up their attempt at the ball. Grabs a knockout though. But most important act this turn is blitzing the ball carrier. Um, really needs to happen much earlier. And then once the ball's on the floor, you can see what else you can do about it as well with your other actions. If all your team have acted and then the ball goes on the floor, you can't do anything about it. And then they'll probably just pick it up again next turn. Again, I think the mighty, the mighty blow doing the blitz is going to be more worth it. Um, and marking with two assists is a waste of an action. So the ball's on the floor, didn't need this other assist. Um, this blitzer could have been going to probably not try and pick up the ball, but definitely going to stand on it. Um, would have been good. Because, um, yeah, Norse are still in control of this ball. They had two tackle zones on it. There's a Yeti standing next to it. 
I'm sure this guy's going to pick the ball up. Probably try and make a pass because he's on 15 points. Uh, although they've gone with the... Okay, they went with uh, someone else, failed the 109 pick up, and it bounced onto the Yeti. Um, who now has to try and make wild animal rolls to either move up the pitch with it or hand the ball off to someone else. Um, which is tricky. You can use your blitz and not actually hit anyone to make those two plus rolls. But if you blitz, you can't hand the ball off. Uh... It's failed, but it doesn't matter. I had two dice anyway. Uh, so, yeah, finally getting a hit in with Mighty Blow, but didn't do anything that time with the low armor roll. One of those catches you really didn't want to make, I think. I feel like if this is an ogre, uh, maybe even a troll or something, it was really stupid. You can still have you can have a go at scoring, but a, a wild animal is so difficult to do what you want with. Um, Bretonians, yeah, falling back. Kind of the um, yeah, I I can't remember. I obviously heard about this, and I don't know the final score. The only things I know about the game. Um, but I can't remember what their approach was here, or didn't hear. So he's throwing the blitz to go forwards, and he's, he's hitting on three dice. I think I probably wouldn't have fended there, because it's a knockdown anyway. He's going to be on the floor. You might as well pull the Yeti further forwards where you can get some assists on it. So you can't get any assists on it here. There's no guard on the Bretonian team. If the Yeti's standing there, you can do a bit more about it. Um, especially with Dauntless available. Uh, so you'd have an assist from that guy if you stand him up. Obviously, if Arbor had broken, that doesn't work. But if the Yeti's in there, he can assist. You cancel this assist with, with another player. Or or actually, you don't because he's his assist already cancelled out. And you've got in here, and it's a 3 plus Dauntless roll for two dice on the ball, because the Yeti's standing in that square. Here he's too protected, and you can't get an assist on him. So that's a good good chance to switch Frenzy off. Uh, sorry, switch Fend off, force Frenzy to move them into an unfavourable position. Extra Norse in there would have caused a problem. Yeah, so wouldn't have got the assist, and it would be three plus a three plus Dauntless roll for, for one dice on the ball. Which actually they can still get, uh, because yeah, both these players are all marked, and there's no guard. Yeah, it can take just one dice on the ball there. So ultimately it didn't matter, but, but it's, it's good to think about um, if a frenzy player's hit a fend, a fend player, they've knocked you over anyway, what's going to happen if they move that extra square? Is it going to be a benefit to you? Okay, let's so line up some two dice blocks here. Uh, doesn't follow up. I think I would follow up there because they obviously want to use their blitz on the Yeti for the two plus wild animal roll and then get it to move. But if it's hitting a player there and you make it follow up, it's then got to dodge away. Um, here it can blitz probably this way um, and, and knock that down. So you can maybe try and... No, you can't really go through there. Yeah, wherever this Yeti wants to blitz, it's probably going to have to dodge away after. So they've done quite well to, to do that. Got one dice there, re-rolled into a skull. So it's obviously trying to open up uh, somewhere for the Yeti to go. Um, but didn't manage to do that. Yeah, yeah, both down wasn't good enough against that block lineman. Yeah, two more turns for the Norse to score. The Yeti holding the ball. Doesn't look good for them on this attack. And loads of Bretonians back covering this as well. They're um, yeah, defending really solidly, actually, the Bretonians here. Uh, grabbed an injury there, which is a miss next game. 
I'm going to level lineman, uh, blitz here, on the ball carrier, uh, no not on the ball carrier, on that guy. So just daring the Yeti to try to move I guess, try and surround it. Um, we'll still have a Berserker in here, we am going to clear, yeah, clear those off, just get the um, <coughs> the advances on, make the screen a bit clearer. Oh, this foul didn't matter, um, set up too nice anyway. Uh -huh. We can look at maybe what the, uh, the Norse have. So, yeah, not a lot actually. I mean, they can stand up one of these players, which means he can't assist. Actually, this one's going to be better because then he can he can cancel both of those assists. You've got to jump up here on this lineman because the, um, the Yeti's got guard. And then I guess you try and blitz there, push back to there. And you want, it, you want the Yeti standing there. Um, after pushing this guy back, then knocking him over second block, hopefully. And yet he's standing there with three more squares of movement. And then you've got to get it into the end zone next turn. I think that's about the best you can do. Yeah. So I could have thrown a jump up block against this this lineman on two dice, which would have left two dice on there to there. To there. into one dice I think. Uh, oh no it's not a berserker, I thought it was a berserker. Um, so just pushing back. Can still go for the blitz there. No that failed. Failed on a one and Lono ruined everything so Lono looks like no score this half. Unless the Yeti can make a pass <laughs> I think to this runner who, who needs to get into the end zone. Maybe a handoff to this guy but they need to clear some of the attackers end off. Looks like a scoreless, a scoreless at half time game. And one dice there. Which is really risky. Um, yeah, just surrounding the Yeti. So using their blitz there. He probably wanted a tackle zone down to go for the handoff, but hasn't got the tackle zone gone. Yeah, that's helpful. So if this guy can hit here now. Yeah, found the wild animal again. That's a four plus, probably almost certainly to hand off to one of these players. Um, that did not work out. And that's going to be no score at half time. Hey, red dice. <clears throat> And we just got some blocks to finish the, uh, the half. So quite a few Bretonians to act. Let's see, here we go. We've got a blitz from this lineman. Doesn't get anything there. And that's turn over. Not much in the way of injuries. So there were a few knockouts, uh, knocked out and awesome. One one casualty, I think. I don't think we saw any Bretonians injured. Uh, yeah, so one also has a missing next game, unleveled lineman. One of these knockouts is back. Uh, so that puts the Norse on 10 players for the half. Uh, he's knocked out, so it's a Berserker knocked out. Uh, other blockers there, uh, they're defending the stuff. 
Oh, the, yeah, nothing in the injuries for the Bretonians. Uh, they'll be looking to attack. So they've also got lots of players on the line of scrimmage, which is going to give up lots of hits. Although with no guard on the, um, the Bretonian team, it's going to be tricky for them to find two dice. Uh, can go there and then there. Um, if they have an extra player starting there, they can get two dice on both of these. So yeah, this this guy one further forwards um, means no one's got to uh, spend their first turn uh, doing that. It's perfect defence anyway, though. So both guards together here means these are pretty unhittable. All their strength and guard over here. Although all that really does is mean the Bretonians are going to attack this way because this is their weak point. It's two dodge players, so there one tackles over here. But it's just this just shuts off that side for the Bretonians. And it does look like with two blitzes over there, the third one here, that that's their point of attack. But the Bretonians are quicker uh, and they, they just need to swing this way now. I'm grabbing a stun off that. Um, can maybe have grabbed grab some more uh, yardage with that player. You still have movement left. Okay, so very definitely making a push on the left. Uh, they're not going to take any of these hits, I'm sure, because there'll be there'll be red dice everywhere. This is a weak point of the um, Bretonian line here. Um, so I just want to look at the play they've got on. So two dice here. If that's a knockdown, uh, which is fairly likely, uh, with no block on this player, this one can just come through over here and get at the ball. Uh, the Yeti can take this one down. You've got an off where You can go one, two, three, four, five. Um, and you've got... Don't even need the assist, actually. Maybe maybe this lineman comes to mark this one and you've just got four dice on the ball. Um, quite simply. Off where has gone that way, though. Yeti's hitting there. So it does get that one knocked down. Uh, maybe this Berserker can get over here. There's a knockdown for a stun. Uh, that was that one. So this one could get through at the ball. I don't know if maybe the Berserker. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, he's too go for it's away. Where can this lineman get with this one? This, well, this guy's kind of in the way, isn't he? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's too go for it's to hit there, but. So really you might as well have made two go for it to get the guard in here and this guy could have blitzed. Um, and that's, that's your two dice. So the Berserker is blitzing but it's like he's going this way. So against the sidestep. This Berserker's stuck there. And they can make some hits this way too. <clears throat> Dodge away there. <coughs> it's using, using the dodge skill and then coming in. That's two marks on the ball. Yeah, at the moment, this looks like it's going to have to be a dodge away. Yeah, just trapped itself in with that, I think. This block here was a. Uh... Yeah, you could have pushed him away there and still had your blitz available to, to, to deal with this guy. But made the dodge. Um, right on the top. Oh, making a throw. Okay. So this is a five plus throw. Is it five? Is this a. Oh, it's very sunny. Okay. So need it. That's dropped out. Uh, okay, that's dangerous. That is dangerous for the uh, Bretonians. Um, marker on here means this guy can be freed up fairly easily 
Although well, side sidestep means he might be keeping this this guy marked. Okay, so that has done it. Actually got the short hands guy over here who would be a good scoring candidate as well. Another one on the wild animal. Two plus that was gonna be the blitz this turn. It's three plus with a reroll for sure hands. Uh, Stanley summon on the ball first. Yep. Yeah. Make sure a bounce is gives you more chance of having the ball covered. Got the ball anyway. And then we want some cover in. Where are you going to get cover? Is this, oh, this guy's not available. This one can dodge. It does so. Yeah, that's quite solid cover in there. Uh, and this, yeah, and then there's only Lyman over here, one who can't really reach and one who can't really dodge. So it's, it's good for the Norse. Okay, so it has made it. Are we going to see a dodge, dodge from this Lyman? He's four plus for two dice on the ball, so it's going to be a good idea. Oh, dodging from here, okay. okay so if they wanted to not follow up there, could have gone that way instead. Or could could stick dodge to there and gone there. And um, they have got... Oh, no, this guy's not got dodge, so it doesn't matter if he's got tackle. Um... We'll look at what the Lords can do here. So they've got a free the ball carrier up. Um, full back plan if they need it. You've got a three plus dodge there. Uh, and then you're working your way over here trying to protect the ball for another turn. Um, what they might really want to do is get rid of this guy. And they've got this. Yeah, I think I feel like the Blitz has got to be there, but I can't see who's going to do it. And that's a surf waiting to happen. So it looks like they're starting there. Um, I can only get one dice on this guy, I think. Oh, there's another player here. So you're probably looking at an assist over here, and then a blitz. Then this guy can hit that one. Push him away, this isn't the sidestep one, it isn't, it isn't the sidestep one. Push him away, and then you've got, you can go down here, as long as that's a knockdown. If he's if he's only a pushback, uh, you're, you're probably coming sideways. But starting with this surf attempt, uh, and he's, he's going to be gone. Almost certainly, he is. <clears throat> um, does leave him on the touchline, but he should be fine at straight five with no real threat over here. Yeah, so has marked up this guy using the blitz there, which is where they needed to, and gets a knockdown as well. Would have wanted to follow up there anyway, because that's the path for the ball carrier. Gets a knockdown there too. So now ball carrier can just come over this way. Two go for it to score if they want to do it this turn. Um, or you can just hang out over there for a turn. So I don't think the Bretonians are getting at this. Um, you should probably have done that before that block, just in case. But good to do it before the uh, the Yeti potentially one in nine didn't turn over. Two dice there. I think this is the guy who can maybe have, uh, especially with the dodge skill available. Um, could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's two go through it. So you know, you'd have to have gone through tackle zones. Let's get that name out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two go for it. Yeah, but I think the best they can do without dodging there, then there, then there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two go for it to hit on one dice. Um, so that'd be four plus, four plus, three plus, and two, two pluses over there. So that's a lot of dice, but he was the one who could have reached, really. Um, just thinking it, it would have been worse, worth going for that. Just to get a marker on the wall, if nothing else. Yeah. 
Not that many removals this game. Just uh, quite a few stuns coming out. You're going to see Blitz here. I didn't need this assist. Just a, a player who could have done something else and had more pressure on the ball, maybe. Uh, just sticking that in. So it goes one up after kicking. Uh, which puts him in a really good position. We've, we've got five, six turns left. So, yeah, Bretonians can take this to overtime by, uh, by scoring back. Two knockouts stay out is quite big. Uh, put some three down, I think it's nine players. I think there are 12 on the roster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, nine. And Bretonians still their full squad, which is 12 as well. Yeah, there's not, those knockouts not coming back is fairly big. Um, and it is, yeah, four, four turns for the Bretonians to stick one in. Perfect defence. Um, quite happy with how it is. I think I might have spread out, maybe dropped a player back, because this looks like with the um, lack of blocks that the Britannians have got on, it looks like they're going for a quick score. So maybe watching the flanks a bit more, make it a bit harder for them to get through. Having a berserker or two a bit deeper. Um, or maybe the off where enough who can just go get anybody. Um, yeah, could have could have could could have just made it a bit more difficult for them to score because it looks like they're going for a quick one. They're giving away a lot of hits here, but let's see sort of where their um, their blitz comes in. I think this block tackle guy on this dodge runner might be the good idea. He's gone that way though. So just marking everyone up. To, to make it more difficult, but they're giving away two dice blocks. Sort of everywhere, really. Okay, and the guard made that one dice, so that was just a pushback. And yeah, left this, left uh, this big gap for them to go put pressure on the ball as well. There's a knockout, I think. It's maybe the first Bretonian removal we've had. Um, pretty sure there weren't any before. So three does from that lineman, so Fen prevents the uh, second block, but that's fine. Could also go put pressure on the ball. Yeah, Bretonians let themselves get a bit too divided here, and this massive gap is also doing exactly the right thing, just going through it. This is going to be into one dice, two, two red dice. So the inherent danger of frenzy there, especially against sidestep, uh, where you can just pull them uh, into a position where they're going to get in trouble. That would have been more for the second second block. Uh, casualty for the Yeti on that block lineman. He's just badly hurt. Yeti has picked up a lot of casualties the past couple of seasons, much more in the second season than the first. Uh, that's two dice. We'll be able to hit that guy again. Um, but Norse have two dice on the ball without having to roll any dice at the moment. You've, you've got to shut that down first. Go for the pass. So Sun not a problem that time. Okay, throws it to a blocker who can score. Isn't going to. They used a the reroll on the catch. The blitzer um, with the catch skill would have wouldn't have used the team reroll there. And it's the same same uh, three plus three plus roll would have been a quick pass as well actually I think. So it'd have been four plus three plus and the three plus with the reroll. If they're watching team development. This is the last game of the season. Yeah, this guy will level. But this guy's on two points and could, could do with a touchdown. It's like they're going to go dodge runner uh, for one dice. 
probably about the best they've got. Uh, Yeti moved on a four plus wild animal. Yeah, marking up there. Yeah, that makes a dodge. If this was a blitz or not? Don't have the icon though, no, no blitz. If maybe this was a blitz. Yeah, it was. And gets a one dice pal. For an armor break. Ball's in the end zone, but not in anyone's hands. Scoring threat here. So first move for the Bretonians, right? They gotta think what do we want from this turn? Obviously I'd like to score. And they've got a three plus dodge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two three pluses to score. So they can try and do that. But what else is going on? This guy can score if they can get the ball to him. So this laying down player, just go mark him. Makes it much harder. Uh, then you've got You've got a block player here who can get two dice. You've got two dice here with this wrestle guy. Uh, probably not a lot you can do about that. So you probably take probably take that block. Maybe blitz with him. Go there if you start with a pushback. Put him there. Hit him with the lineman. But that's after marking there. And then try out your yeah, three plus dodge for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to pick up. Don't know what they're doing though. Oh, just went straight for that. Found that. Needs a, needs a re-roll. Gets it. Okay, so did score. But had to use a re-roll there if that second one hadn't been a 3+. plus. The ball's got 3 and 8 chance of scattering on the pit, off the pitch. They could go anywhere. And the Norse have got someone in scoring position. Um, and they've not did, done anything to shut that down. And um, that could have been a couple of rolls away from a second north touchdown but it's one or as it was uh, it worked out but there, there were risks in that um, which were easy to, to do something about the attack guy comes back so Bretonia is still on a full squad uh, oh no they're not because there was that injury that's a uh, badly hurt block lineman uh, but they are still on 11 players because they had one on the bench north is still on 10 because that knockout hasn't come back still uh, but Norse have the ball back for two turns. So Bretonian is setting up. It's a good idea to have some deeper players. I think I'd, I'd go a bit deeper with these two blitzers, like back here, because you know at the end of the Norse's next turn they need to have players who can score. And if you've got quick players, um, deep and in the middle of the pitch, maybe all four blitzers back there somewhere, you can just go deal with them. Um... I think a, yeah, a quite deep defence here. Or maybe across the width of the pitch to make it really hard for them to get through. But that's where you need sort of stand firm players holding your anchor in your, your flanks and stuff. Yeah, I think all four blitzers back in this area means you've got a, you, you've got all the tools you need to react to where the Norse are going. And Norse are rolling quite a few dice here without any scoring threats in place. So if they drop the ball, it's impossible for them to score. Um, I, I think a runner down the flank straight away is, is the way to go. Because um, as soon as he's there, the possibility of scoring is, is there. Um, and if you turn over before, you, it's impossible to score. Um, and it's, it's a free move to just stick this runner over here. But, you know, handed off the ball again, I think. No, this is a pass, uh, which is inaccurate because of the sun. Um, but he's cool, so this runner can go now. If he was down here before and you drop the ball, you still got the chance next turn to get the ball to him. Um, as it stands, they're going to need to make a dodge, aren't they? I think this guy, this guy is the one to blitz because he's got dodge. That lineman, so they've thrown that go for it, but that lineman hasn't gained them anything. He can't assist there. He's put tackle on, on him, I suppose. But if he gets a pushback here, that's not tackle on the ball. You maybe see where he goes afterwards and if he's still standing, and then try and get tackle on him. Um, but at the moment, they've still got this. They've still got to hit him. And unless they're hitting him from here, uh, to. Oh, hang on. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. So it's a go for it to hit from there and keep tackling it, uh, which is maybe worthwhile. But this is the this is the easier way to get a block, and then you're going to push him there where he hasn't got tackle, uh, marking him. And a double skulls and any of these blocks first um, turns over. Uh, they tried to blitz with the guy without dodge. Um, you'd have had another chance of the three plus if you'd used that one. So that takes tackle away, and that's just a eight out of nine times it's going to work. Uh, dodge away, although they're going to go for the blitz here, which gets it anyway. And that looks like where the Norse's 2-1 win comes in. Um, yeah, so a really quite well executed two-turn uh, touchdown. Well, it worked, so it was, it was well executed. Um, but it could have been it could have been dealt with definitely better by the Britannians. Um, by using the dodge blitzer to blitz rather than the um, one who had a single three plus roll to try and try and get the uh, the blitz in. Um, that's the final score. So. Manly Men in Purple Pants finished seventh for the season. Uh, that's quite a nice MVP. I think that Berserker was knocked out a lot of the game. Uh, G11. I'm sure it's on, it started on five points. He must have made a pass at some point in the game, which I missed. Um, I'll have a look at that. Uh, loads more of the ball. Uh, not blocking them a bit, but. Tony's doing much better with um, with removals, it's those knockouts, and then those knockouts not coming back made it harder for the Norse than it might have been, otherwise have been. Um, and that was Armour 7 coming into play. Tony's have quite a lot of Armour 7 as well, but I don't think they were hitting the linemen very much. Maybe, maybe they were, um, but it, yeah, I don't know, maybe they were. Um, just not getting through the armour. But uh, yeah, so that Berserker did get six points in that game. So must have must have thrown a pass at some point. One of those passes where they were moving the ball around. Um, and and did level, which is nice. Uh, two touchdowns and a casualty for the Yeti. They have here MVP. That's going to be the uh, Blitzer on five points. Or now on five points. He scored that touchdown uh, as a pass. And, and the casualty they got, which I think is a blocker. Uh, God for the old. Uh, there's a lot to see on dice here. Um, yeah, wake up from knockout. It's, I mean, it's going to be three and four or four and three, I suppose, if it's on the numbers. So it's, that's that's. Well, it didn't. It didn't. It's not what the game rested on anyway. Um, it's got a, quite a decent injury rolls. Like I was saying, there weren't that many actual removals, just like loads of stuns. Uh, and that. Uh, that berserker must have thrown that pass in turn 15 um, to get the ball to uh, to the runner because that was a fat foul re-roll to success that's the only pass i made must have been that one um loner was no help at all um but the yeti getting stuck with the ball in the first half two of them came up there on trying to re-roll wild animal rolls that didn't work um and yeah a couple of couple of these failures were two pluses that didn't work out uh, Bretonians. What we got? Successful casualty. I guess that means it's a badly hurt. I guess that's a successful casualty because it was their one, their one lineman who was injured. Uh, got that. Uh, Dauntless didn't play ball very much. I think a lot of them were three pluses though. Um, but if they have three pluses, that should, I guess, on the numbers be the other way round. Go for it. So good for them. Oh, quite a few dodges the key one in turn 16 where if it was the dodge blitzer they'd have had another go at it so maybe maybe that would have worked out differently um but yeah there we are that's how we finish um I could grab our grab our standings back uh oh actually because i'm putting this in i was going to go through where everyone finished but i went um the yeah this this game is that uh, those two, uh, they fin do finish 7th and 8th. Undead and Lizard Men are probably next in this playlist. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to drop it. I probably will put it before that final. So next game, if you want to see, is Lizard Men and Undead uh, playing for 5th for place. They both won the semi-finals against these two. Um, and then 
the Dented Shield playoff is these four teams, uh, and I won't spoil any of those because I can't remember where we're going to be in the playlist. Uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, going to be our season. Um, the, well, the last one I'm recording for the season. There's still just two finals to come, um, but we are coming back for a season five. But we're also in the meantime going to have a little six team tournament. Two of the coaches are a bit busy, um, and the other six of us are going to pick our favourite Dented Shield team so far. Uh, to play a little probably this and format because there's six of us um, so it doesn't fit neatly into a knockout which I think will probably be two two games um, something like that I'll, I'll need to look at the settings and how it works but um, but yeah 16 this and format where I'm, I'm going to bring my old chaos team back from seasons one and two um, the necromantic coach is going to bring their lizard men team back um, this one the coach is not in I think we're going to see halflings from Jim Bobalula uh, these two teams we've just seen play uh, are both, both coming back. That's a Windows Defender summary. Alert. Um, goodbye. And who else here? This game. I think, uh, yeah, I think Lord Tarquin's not sure whether it's the Kemri or his vampires from Team 1 and 2 who are coming back uh, at the moment. But we'll see how that goes. Um, and that'll be, that'll be a separate little playlist, I think, uh, some sort of interim cup competition. Uh, and, yeah, we'll play that. I think we're starting that in the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll see how that goes.